you breathe in what's immaterial and you blend in the material and you know the emotional and thought body and all that together alchemized comes out as your voice as frequency your frequency like isn't that amazing it just blows my mind the breath is our connection to the divine now she's gonna talk about weird things i'm talking about weird things all day you don't want to live in my head Welcome to the Sound of You podcast. This is a space where we have inspiring, thoughtful conversations about the voice, about healthy self-expression, and all things spirituality and personal growth. My name is Friederike, I am your host, and I am so excited that you're here. Let's get started. Hello, beautiful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, or maybe you're listening to this in the middle of the night. (laughs) Welcome back to The Sound of You. In this episode, I'm really excited about it, as I'm actually excited about all episodes. (laughs) I will start a new series. I will start a series that is going to be accompanying us on this podcast as kind of a thread, like a red line that goes through all episodes. And I'm speaking about what I call the psycho-spiritual alphabet of voice. The psycho-spiritual alphabet of voice. Now, this is a long-winded term that I invented. I was looking for a different name that sounds a little bit catchier, but I couldn't come up with any term. So along the episodes, if you feel like, Afedi, that's what you should call it, be sure to send me a message and I will take all <laughs> ideas with with pleasure. So the psycho-spiritual alphabet of voice, why that? So I told you that the sound of you combines all my worlds. And these are in particular the spiritual world, the psychological world, and the world of voice. And the voice, you know, for me, the voice is a bridge. There is so much more to the voice than quote unquote, just the sounds. But before we get into this, there is something that I want to share with you. So I'm a very real person, as you will get to know me in these episodes, or maybe you already know me. And this is actually the second time that I'm recording this episode because the first time that I recorded this episode, I forgot to switch to my external microphone, which made the whole sound a little shitty. And I'm like, who cares? You know, it's about the content. And I really love the episode. I came up with some words there and terms and phrases that I was like, wow, where did these come from? And then my amazing, beautiful boyfriend partner was like, no, that's unprofessional. Like, don't you want to record it again? Like, if you're going to do this, like, maybe, like, maybe just do it again. And I'm like, "Mm, we want to go on vacation today. So you are listening to this two, three weeks after I'm recording this. And as of today, we are sitting here in a beautiful mess of bags with climbing gear, um, bags with camping equipment, boxes of clothes, And um, we're just about to do some last minute shopping and then go hop into our camper. We wanted to leave this morning, but then things came up. And anyway, you know how it is. And so I'm like, really, I don't know, like, it's going to be okay. Maybe I'll just record it along the way. And he just gives me this look. He's like, no, don't you want to do it again? Like, and I'm like, yeah, but it's going to take a while. You know, I'll record it and maybe I won't have the same energy and the energy was just good now. And then I'll have to edit it a little bit. And, and anyway, I still have to shower and shave. (laughs) You know, he just looks at me and smiles and he's like, 
yeah, that's fine. Then we'll just leave in the evening. And first of all, loves, this is the beauty of expression and communication to let people know where you are, what's happening and what are your plans and so that you can bounce off ideas and actually get an option that works for both of you. So he just smiles, he's like, it doesn't matter really, like even if we just go there and we just go there to sleep the first night and we come there in the evening, who cares? And I'm just looking at him like, really? I was thinking that you would say like, oh no, like I really want to leave now, it's vacation time. And he just smiles and he's like, yeah, that's too bad, right? <laughs> so yeah, cheers to my beautifully supportive partner. And we will get to self-expression and partnerships in some other episode. Let me have a sip of coffee. So, the psycho-spiritual alphabet of voice. There's so much more to the voice. There's so much more to the voice than just the physical aspects. But even if you just think about the physical aspects, I mean, think about it. There's the sound. There is the resonance, the vibration, the actual physical vibration that is created in your body and outside of your body through the voice. There is the act of breathing. There's your vocal folds. There's your muscle support. There is the words that we choose to speak and everything that, you know, goes on between two people or more than two people as we communicate. So this is just the worldly aspect. But for me, the voice is a bridge. The voice is a bridge between your inner world and your outer world in terms of getting your emotions out. And I'm actually, as I'm speaking, I'm like, I wanted to talk about the first letter. I wanted to talk about the Atman first because then it's all going to make sense. Anyway, I will continue this thought. Welcome to my world. <laughs> of a multifaceted, multi-dimensional thinker. Oh my God. So a bridge between your emotions and your thoughts and feelings and the voice that comes out of you, the sound that comes out of you, the resonance that comes out of you. It is a bridge between people as we speak, as we sing, as we make music and sounds. You don't even necessarily have to speak the same language in order to communicate. As we grow older, we put a lot of weight and value on words. But if you have ever learned anything about frequency and body language, you will know that, well, hopefully the words that somebody speaks are going to match all the rest of what they're communicating through their body and through their tone of voice. But it's actually a lot more that, the tone and the body, the frequency, than the words. And the third way in which the voice is a bridge for me is between the immaterial and the material world. It's actually an alchemizer of the immaterial and the material world. And here we go. I am bridging my words, my communication to the first letter of the psycho-spiritual alphabet of voice. Please invent a new term, guys. Atman. So the first letter is A. And... First, I thought, man, I want to start with breathing. The first word that actually came to me was Atman. My native language is German, and Atman in German means breathing. I'm like, damn, that sucks. I'm going to have to wait until the letter B, until I can talk about breathing, which we will, but in a different fashion than what I'm going to share with you about Atman and the Atman. So... I think it was in a book by Greg, Greg Braden that I first heard that the German word Atman relates back to an old Hindu word called the Atman. And it's not even just a word, it's a whole like, 
It's a whole spiritual concept. I went and researched and I watched this more than one hour long talk by a Hindu Swami to understand the concept of, of Atman and I'm blown the f away. This is so deep and to have my native language, the, the word for breathing in my native language be associated or related to the Atman just blows my mind. Because if I think about what breathing means in other languages, okay, I don't know that many other languages, but let's just take French. It's respire. Let's take English. It's breathing or inhale, exhale. Let's take Italian, spirare, respirare. I think it's kind of the same in Spanish. Hmm, I wonder if I know another language. But anyway, you get my point. The other languages refer more to the actual physical action than the German word, which goes to the Atman. And you're like, Fidi, get to the point of it. What's the Atman now? The Atman in Hindu tradition is your essence, is our essence. Isn't that just fascinating? Like, I can't wrap my head around this. And I'll try to explain it as best as I can. I'm not a Hindu and I'm like, I'm not an expert in Hinduism. So I will share with you the way that I understood the Swami. The Atma, there, there are three bodies, okay, according to this teaching. So it's your physical body. It's very similar to New Age spiritual teachings, by the way. The physical body. Then there is the emotional and thought body. And then there is the Atman, which is the space that your body inhibits. The space that your body inhibits. And the Atman is infinite in terms of immortal. It doesn't die. It was there. The space for you was there before you were there because otherwise you wouldn't be there. <laughs> Get it? So, I mean, if you then look at Hindu teachings of rebirth, there are some a lot more consequences to this teaching than what I'm just sharing with you and it will all make sense. But... Let's just talk about that. Isn't that just a fascinating concept? So while your material physical body can die, the Atman stays. So, and, and it's supposed to be your essence. So I guess you could say it's like the soul. But then I have never heard anyone speak of the soul as that's the, the space you're body inhibits the body that your body inhibits the immaterial kind of balloon <laughs> you live in <laughs> so thinking about that like it's your essence you breathe atman the atman your essence you breathe that in you breathe in what's immaterial and you blend in the material and, you know, the emotional and thought body. And all that together, alchemized, comes out as your voice, as frequency, your frequency. Like, isn't that amazing? It just blows my mind. The breath is our connection to the divine. Now she's going to talk about weird things. I'm talking about weird things all day. You don't want to live in my head. But think about it. I always think it's so funny when people say, I don't believe in anything else that I can't see. And I'm like, well, you're breathing. You're breathing in something that you can't see. <laughs> so I guess you don't exist. <laughs> now, same people will say, well, science tells me that there's ox oxygen and all that stuff. But, well, science is catching up with things that some intuitives already knew. And it's still something that you cannot see. 
Breathing is how you can tell you are alive. Somebody can tell you are alive or not. What we look for in a person is their breath and their heartbeat, yes. But it's ultimately our connection, our connectedness to the breath of the divine that gives us life. And why is this important to the voice? Well, like, think about it. It's an expression of your essence in all its dimensions. The immaterial and the material. The infinite and the finite. The immortal and the mortal. That is our voice, people. Do you get how special that is? The power of our voice. And that's why, in my opinion, it's so important to be kind to our voices, to free our voice, to to make sure that we are in alignment, that we act and speak in alignment with our essence, with our true nature, with our soul, if you want. So it's truthful. Hmm. I can't believe I just went into this. <laughs> Let me think if there is something else that I wanted to say about this subject. There actually is. There's something that I call sound channeling. But before I dive into this and talk too much about myself again, basically that's what babies do. Well, in not in all senses of the word channeling but okay let's say babies cannot communicate through words i was saying earlier how as adults we place too much value on words babies don't have words and yet their frequency the tone and the volume And everything about the sounds they make tell us exactly what they want to say. It's not a newborn's fault that we don't understand them. It's because we have unlearned, we have forgotten to understand and connect to raw frequency. The truthfulness of raw frequency. And we all can do that. And it's so important that we do that because it will make our understanding of each other so much better. And it will make our own communication so much freer. If you can learn to align your language, your words, your frequency, the sound of your voice, your, even your singing, all sounds that you make, your sensual sounds, with your truth, with your essence, with the Atman. Your life's going to be beautiful. And if we take, you know, if you go back to Atman and we take Atman breathing as intricately connected to the Atman, to essence, it's actually not that difficult. We just need to get out of the way to let that raw frequency flow through and to train our ears and our hearts to receive the essence of that frequency. We can understand and connect to another person's essence as much as we are connected to our own. Wish you a beautiful day. I'm going to continue packing now. Take some really deep breaths while I'm doing it. And yet, have my coffee as well. So, without further ado, have a beautiful rest of your 
day, night, evening, morning, whatever it is. And as always, let me know how this resonates and please share this episode. Please share my podcast with everyone you feel like would like this. I am so grateful that you're here and I'm looking forward to seeing you and hearing you again. Mwah. You just listened to the Sound of You podcast. And if you want to free your self-expression, be confident in who you are and release old junk that really doesn't serve you anymore, get in touch with me and join the tribe. Bless this world with the sound of you.